Hey, Paul, nice work, man. Uh, that email that you sent me was, I was really surprised with the number of quality finds that you noted on there with the photos. Um, thoroughly impressed. Let me know if you are ever looking for a career change. Um, let me thank you first and foremost uh, for having me come out. I really appreciate the opportunity to come take a look at this place again. I uh, tell you what, let's get started outside and take a look at some of these fun things. So you had called out a few little things such as the tape is not the same tape as required according to the manufacturer. Um, of course, lots of tape missing. Now it looks like to me that they've, they've marked this already, these spots. Now they have not marked this one. Uh, this should have been taped behind your trim. Now this could still be pulled back and, and taped for sure. But uh, taping, that's always one of the biggest things that I see. In fact, here, you can see that this window has not been taped on the sides or that head, missing that flashing. But even more concerning than that is that, to me, it looks like they did not follow the manufacturer's instructions with these windows. Let me show you real quick. Just so happens that these windows have the instructions right here on them. And they clearly state, let's see if I can zoom in here, or weather resistant barriers recommended for all installed new construction units. This includes self adhering flashing tape or like material of at least four inches in width, four inches to assist in properly sealing the building envelope. A required continuous bead of three eighths inches or greater of silicone or similar exterior grade sealant is to be applied on the nailing fin surface that will come to rest on the rough opening surface. So what is that telling us? That's telling us that you should see some uh, sealant, some caulk gooping out from the sides of this, or at least visible inside the holes. And if not there, then maybe in here at the, between the window and the rough opening, but no sealant whatsoever. So out here, at uh, this window back here, here's a good spot to actually see. You've got this little, slight little bubble. Normally that's no big deal here at the nailing flange, but obviously there is no sealant back behind there. Took a good look and it is bone dry. So got a broken window, uh, missing window. So that'll be a good opportunity to uh, get it done right. However, <coughs> to the space right here, you should have four inches for that tape. Now, obviously it's been sided up and really it's done totally out of order. Uh, but the way that they've done it, you've got less than two inches, less than two inches here to put your nailing flange and you need to have four inches for that tape. Now, that, uh, that's according to the manufacturer's installation instructions. Now, they still have an opportunity to do it right because the windows aren't in. Here at the front, you've got the zip. I like to see zip. Um, and one thing that I always see them do wrong and you can tell this is because they're used to doing thermoply but this masonry flashing has been installed behind the zip system now the manufacturer's instructions state that because uh the bottom can be exposed to water it needs to be taped onto the front so uh this will allow water to wick up and make contact with that exposed uh wood at the bottom Another thing I'm seeing here is issues with the tape. You, can, you were spot on when you said it wasn't rolled. I mean, that's evidenced here at this uh, awful wrinkly one over here on the right. But also, it's missing some fasteners. Um, up here at the middle between the windows here, let me, let me zoom in and I'll, I'll show you here. Um, <clears throat> right here, you can see the bottom half has not been nailed across that. Uh, the top half is, but uh, for proper structural strength, structural strength, uh, that should be fully fastened. And then even over here, uh, you've got nails on the edges, but not in the field. Now over here with the OSB and the house wrap, you've uh, missing some fasteners. You've got one tiny little staple here, but you should have uh, the plastic capped fasteners, the round ones, and that uh, is really what's required by the manufacturer to hold on tight here. On top of that, uh, this should wrap 12 inches around past the edge, not up to the edge. And of course, this crummy cellophane tape 
is really not uh, doing a very good job of holding that. Coming around here, you got the same thing on this side, just a few fasteners here, not even the right ones. This masonry flashing has been pulled up where they've uh, lifted the hold down. On the right side here, man, you were spot on with these tendons that had not been tensioned. And I can tell you why they did it, man. It's, uh, it's because there were gaps on this side and the concrete, the concrete held on and just bit down onto this bottom form board. And that did not allow them to uh, be able to pull it off when it was time to come tension these tendons. So, uh, of course, this should be done uh, seven to ten days after they do the pour. And that's because the concrete is still fairly elastic. It, it's, it's this plastic consistency. Uh, so these are, need to be, need to be tensioned. So here at the back, now I know you had called this out previously. It looks like they have addressed part of it. Of course, you can see that they didn't do anything about that weather resistant barrier that has been torn, but they did put up some counter flashing there between the roof and the wall. However, they have not taped any of that. So of course, any water that runs down, <clears throat> gets behind that siding and runs down that sheathing uh, is going to get behind your flashing here. So that definitely needs to be taken care of. Um, in case you had noticed, uh, my mic had screwed up sometime during <laughs> the recording of this. And uh, before I realized and got a new mic, uh, I was doing it uh, mute. And so here I am at home trying to dub this over. And so that's why it looks like a bad uh, Japanese Kung Fu movie. So at some point, I did get a new microphone, and I'm sure that you'll hear me talking. Garage. Oh, here it is. The garage. Got this nice header that comes out a pretty good distance this way. They got the strap across it. Looks pretty decent. But you come over here, and this header stops right at the jack studs, right here. Now, typically, this header will come across far enough, far enough to be able to put a grid of nails at a three by three uh, pattern on the outside of this uh, sheathing. And that helps to prevent hinging in case this thing uh, gets pushed over. Um, you know, and you gotta, you gotta think about that because this big wall has a, a big hole in it. So you gotta have all the strength that you can here at these corners, really on these sides. So well, that's one thing. Now, I'm not real sure why they installed this, uh, this OSB here in this, uh, these two stud bays. It's not continuous. Uh, it's just one per stud bay. Not real sure why they did that. They had to nail something up there. You can see these, these nails coming through here. So, I don't know, kind of curious. Maybe, uh, maybe they could enlighten you on why they might have done that. You've got a shear wall here. You know it's a shear wall uh, because you've got this wall bracing, this uh, let-in bracing right here. And they've done a pretty good job of putting in the shot pins about eight inches on center uh, here at this, uh, this wall. So I'm happy to see that. Coming into the kitchen, a couple small things, but the electrical needs some nail plates right here. You're definitely less than an inch and a quarter from the edge of that stud, but also, and this is new code stuff, fun code stuff. Oh, and your builder's gonna hate me for this. But uh, now you're not supposed to have electrical outlets on the sides of the kitchen island. So uh, the reasoning behind that is that you got a crock pot or something here with a cord hanging down and plugged in, it could be pulled, tripped over. Certainly don't want a crock pot full of hot food spilling on somebody. So uh, what's the answer? Well, they're saying now that you need those ones that uh, lift up or, or countertop outlets. So that is gonna be on the report now that I'm having to uh, inspect that. Now up here with the HVAC, you can see that you've got a little bit of this wrapping that is torn there. See that pink hanging out? All that insulation that's, that's present there. That 
needs to be taped up. Looks like it probably tore when they were pulling it through this, uh, through this truss. But the risk here is the potential for uh, condensation to form against that cold duct on the inside. You know, this, this is going to be a big open space uh, between your ceiling and your floor. So that's going to have uh, uh, humidity. They haven't come in and fire blocked any of these holes between the wall and the uh, subfloor or the attic space. So that uh, usually that's done before I arrive so that I can check to make sure it's complete. But they haven't come in here and done it yet. One thing I really like to see is that they've got these studs, two by sixes on 24 inch centers. That gives you plenty of space to put uh, insulation. Uh, I think that's probably our 19-ish, I think, which is considerably more than our 13 that a standard two by four wall would give you. Now, one of the concerns that you had was that some of these anchor bolts a little bit close to the end, and indeed, I'm seeing that. So should be seven widths of uh, that anchor bolt. So a half inch, that would be three and a half inches from the edge. Now, where are you going to put it? Uh, you got more than 12 inches before you hit a space where you could drill another one. So I would say probably the best thing to do is just to put another one in on this side. That'll give you two within, you know, 14 inches of that end, which is probably fine. More than enough. So here in the primary bedroom, looking at how these are fastened. I can see that you got one here that's missing nails. Of course, every hole there has to be fastened. And it's not just this one here. Here, just above the bottom of the stairs, you've got this funny little piece that's coming across. And this guy has zero. Until you get to the very tip top, it's got one. Now this does fold over the top and should have I don't even see it coming all the way over on this side. Uh, it does come over on this side. And it, typically those will fold down and they'll be nailed in from the top as well. But you've got to be able to nail it into the piece that is bearing. So uh, you've, they got to come back in and put some nails in that for sure. Living room. Missed a couple windows there. Uh, broken one, yeah. But here's what I wanted to direct your attention to. You can see how tight this window is against the, the rough frame. And when you come over to the right side, you've got a pretty good gap. So which one is crooked? The window or the frame? Well, I put my level on it, and it turns out it is the window that is crooked. Now, this is the same one that I pointed out that uh, is not properly sealed. So... Uh, you know, I mean, why not just take this whole thing out? You're already missing two, and this one's shattered. Here's a lower attic vent. This should have a baffle. A baffle would be stapled over this to help uh, prevent insulation from covering this when they fill it in. Now, I expect you're going to have probably 48, R48 of insulation here. You're not going to be able to get a full uh, 13 and a half inches of blown in insulation over these eaves so uh, they're probably going to put in a little bit more uh, just to kind of make up for that so you probably have between probably about 16 inches of insulation or so that they're going to put in i'm going to go ahead and go up the stairs here now one thing you had mentioned is that there's no eighth of an inch gap here at uh this at uh, this line in your right uh there should be and I'll include a link to the uh, manufacturer's installation instructions as well as the APA. You got a few spots here where you can see this isn't quite level. You can see that little bit of a shadow there. So you've got a spot here in the living room. And then one actually here in the bathroom as well. This one's a little bit, uh, a little bit higher. So that needs to get leveled out. And you got a spot right here that squeaks. Hear it? Yeah, let me put my mic a little bit closer. Need a few extra nails down here. They did a good job of 
uh, putting them in here. Well, they did an interesting job of putting them in here. Uh, but you should have considerably more. There's one there. Should have considerably more nails. Uh, not seeing any, any, any. Uh, there's some nails over here. This should be like uh, several nails every 16 inches or so. I, I don't remember the exact numbers. I've got it written down. Uh, it'll be in the comment. So, but here at the exterior wall should be uh, nails at least every stud bay. So I'm going to finish this up by showing you, giving you a better look out here at just what they've done or rather haven't done. You can see that they've not put the tape at this uh, flashing. And of course, you've got that weather resistant barrier that's torn. But uh, this, this, all this, any water that comes down, this sheathing is gonna run right underneath, right behind that flashing and then into your wall. So that definitely needs to be taped up and taped up nice and tight. Um, I, you know, even, gosh, I, I would prefer to actually see the sheathing above this flashing here. But, uh, Usually that's not the case. Usually you don't get that. So I'd be okay with tape, as long as they tape it right. And with the proper tape, not that crappy cellophane garbage. So thanks again for having me out. Uh, you know, a lot of what I'm seeing here is pretty typical, honestly. Nothing really egregious. Uh, I think the biggest issue that I'm seeing is the issue with these windows. Of course, most of them are missing. So that gives them the opportunity to install them correctly. Uh, however, they have put in the, uh, that siding on, uh, around where a lot of these windows are supposed to go. And so that begs the question, how, how pray tell are they going to properly flash that according to the manufacturer's instructions? Um, that would be a challenge I would like to see them solve. Uh, because in my opinion, they're going to have to pull off a lot of that siding. So, um, be curious to see how they do it. Hopefully, they will do it the right way. And uh, so I might advise trying to come out here as often as you can, especially when they're actually doing that part of the install, just to make sure you know how they're, they're doing it, how it's getting done. Um, you know, like I said, there's a lot of things that I really like about this build. You've got these, uh, you've got these uh, two by sixes on 24 inch centers, pretty much all the way around the house. And that's uh, great for insulative value. You've got hurricane ties that have been installed between the bottom and top plates here, holding in some of these studs in, in key areas. That's something you don't normally see. So I'm really happy to see that. And they've also used floor trusses instead of eye joists or solid sawn lumber. The difference being is that with the trusses, you don't have to make holes. You don't have to cut anything as opposed to eye joists or solids on two by 12s, which are always cut wrong. Um, they're great. They're, they work perfect, but there's uh, anytime you have to cut something, there's room to screw it up. So, uh, you know, there's definitely some aspects about this house that I like seeing. And there's a few things that uh, it wouldn't hurt for them to, to fix. So. But, uh, you know, um, no house is perfect. The important thing is that they just get it done. So uh, I'll get this report out to you tonight. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if your builder has any questions. Uh, my next job, coincidentally enough, is a final inspection for the same builder. Uh, not here, but uh, closer to the heart of town. ATX, baby. So uh, I'm going to head out of here, get on that, and... Uh, We'll talk to you later on. Take care. Bye.